Well, Communist China's military and rhetorical escalation against Taiwan is testing the Biden administration's response to America's most dangerous geopolitical adversary. Now, while speculation runs rampant about, about President Xi Jinping's next move and breathless commentators discuss the possibility of war over the island nation, the CCP continues advancing a truly global strategy, and Joe Biden seems to be asleep at the switch. The president would rather talk about white supremacy. He'd rather vilify unvaccinated people. He'd rather talk about welfare expansion and the Green New Deal. And while he's doing that, the communist threat grows. America has shiny object syndrome when it comes to foreign policy, and China knows it. Our media outlets love the intrigue and the suspense of a possible U.S.-China standoff. Our pol hapless politicians never miss an opportunity to fixate on a single issue while ignoring broader perspectives and bigger problems. I'm going to give you a big one right now. For all the talk about Taiwan, there's little discussion or action over China's incursions into the Western Hemisphere. Yes, right here, folks, where the regime is eroding American influence right in our backyard. We're used to thinking about communist power in this hemisphere as being isolated in little places like Cuba or Venezuela. The Chinese over the last decade and a half have quietly changed that, doing things that never make a presidential debate and they never make the nightly news. Their military power, their debt trap diplomacy and their economic coercion are spreading like a virus. In July, former Costa Rican President Luis Guillermo Solis cautioned in an op-ed that, quote, Central America seems particularly fertile ground for Chinese expansion. He warned the Chinese capitalizing on the region's division between a Nicaraguan dictatorship that's compromised, states like Guatemala and Honduras and El Salvador teetering on the brink of autocracy, and the effects of COVID-19 and systemic issues in other countries. And he's right. Since 2007, Chinese private and state investment in Central America has amounted to more than $2.3 billion in Mexico. Yes, Mexico, right below our border. $2 billion in Costa Rica, $500 million in Panama. The Chinese are dumping money into Honduras, Guatemala, and this year announced a $550 million infrastructure deal with El Salvador. On the telecom front, Huawei controls 37% of the cellular market in Costa Rica, a key U.S. ally in the region, and is also a major player in Belize. China does not separate business and political objectives, folks. We've talked about that here on our air in terms of its investments in this country. Even so-called private enterprises are used to advance political agendas. In South America, the People's Liberation Army, the Chinese Army, has constructed and controls a space command center in Argentina. That's right, a spaceport. The station played a key role in China's landing of a spacecraft on the dark side of the moon in 2019. Argentina has also signed a cooperation agreement with, Arge with, with China that could lead to the Chinese building, building military bases there. Both Colombia and Peru have purchased Chinese military hardware, and the new Marxist regime in Peru is likely to strengthen ties with Beijing. Among China's principal goals is controlling strategic minerals. They've made large investments in ownership of lithium mines critical to the production of, you guessed it, Joe Biden's electric vehicles, renewable energy, and wearable technology. China is also investing in the energy sector in Chile, Brazil, and Peru. They recently announced a massive all-cash deal involving a lithium op operation in Argentina amounting to more than $700 million. Now, in each of these scenarios, whether the communist Chinese activities involve mining, energy, military, or aid in the form of loans or grants, the regime is buying influence, even with traditional U.S. allies. Now, certainly there are signs of structural cracks in the Chinese juggernaut, mounting debt, lower productivity, and an energy crisis, but the Biden administration shouldn't expect all of that to impact China's global strategy. Unlike Soviet Russia, China has bought a lot of friends to help them weather the storm and grow their influence. The United States leaned into its anti-Soviet, anti-communist strategy during the first Cold War, and it needs to do the same now. Taiwan may be a sexy story for our digital age soothsayers, but it's one shiny object. A weak Joe Biden and a Washington in disarray will continue to ignore China's reach at their own peril. So far, folks, we've been like a moth to a flame, unaware of the mortal danger that lies ahead.
Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.